getting recorded. So I know we're in a, a little bit of a transition um, spot here. You had project two. Hopefully that was a, a good experience. Um, you're headed towards three and four coming up. Um, and, and those will be solo endeavors, kind of a cumulative type of um, experience. Uh, so, you know, if you may have been, well, I did the column, I did the lateral, you're going to have to do all of it coming up. So I'm, I'm looking forward to those, um, those two projects. Uh, gave it a shot with, you know, having you guys submit a video. So I'll see how that went. Um, if you got it, then we're be in a good spot with that. But I, I'll kind of see, perhaps we'll do that. Um, I would like to do it if it went well. Um, and uh, I hope you are, I hope you are doing well. Um, maybe we can have a, I know some of you are about to graduate and I'm very excited for you, but uh, whenever this whole thing is over, maybe we can have some sort of a reunion and um, enjoy the uh, idea of actually being together. Um, the fact that Zoom has now improved so many different features um, is, is quite interesting. So we will go ahead and I'll just kind of keep my eye on it, but this will be videoed. Um, uh, so this is kind of the transition point. Um, a topic in the class, this, this idea of the, the, the cladding, um, the skin of a, of a structure is, um, quite interesting. I, I have, I have some, a few slides today and we'll, we'll go through it. It's on um, Canvas as well. So if you would like to follow along, um, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, so it's actually quite an interesting topic um, from a uh, both structural and architectural perspective. Um, so, I mean, I, I kind of use some of the, you know, the words when I describe cladding just in general, I mean, it is something that um, on the outside of a building is extremely transparent, something that, that is seen, um, that, is, that is right, um, you know, impactful, um, very, you know, I'll keep writing as long as my pen is, um, is, uh, is working, you know, extremely important. You know, you have, if you can pull it off, you know, many different functions, um, that the, uh, that the cladding of the building, um, can, can perform, you know, it's obviously very memorable. Um, but, but a sort of in a, in a passive way, it's, I don't think many people look at a building and say that, oh, that's great cladding. Um, but they do know when they've seen, sorry, another participant. They knew when they've seen something extremely memorable. Um, and, and the caveat though, in all of this and, and from, you know, what will we be able to achieve in here? Um, so from what I was, what I've been told, you know, this is, uh, you know, your exposure to cladding and just the, the issues um, surrounding it, um, the de extremely detail oriented, um, very, uh, very challenging. Just a moment, Let's see if I can get that person. Oh, goodness. Um, so it's, it's, it's something that is not just thrown on the building. It's something that, that, you know, exactly how much we'll be able to get to you is, is under, um, you know, is, is 
kind of unknown, but you know, there are two major sort of cladding components, one that is constructed offsite and sort of brought to the site. So we'll bring that up. Um, precast concrete, um, glass fiber reinforced um, concrete and other materials as well. Just a moment. Let's see if I can get the hang in here. Um, you know, in terms of assembled on the site, you know, cement plaster um, on light gauge framing, um, metal paneling um, that's put on a building, a veneer um, could be masonry. Um, and then also, I mean, this is just, just stunning. Uh, and I'll have some pictures later um, in terms of glass, you know, what, what can be done with, uh, with glass on a, uh, on a building exterior um, or, or also a metal um, curtain wall. So we'll sort of work our way through that um, here today. I say this is a little bit more of an introductory a little bit more of an introductory um, type of experience. Um, at the end, I'll talk about homework. I will talk about homework three, and then also project three. Um, so hopefully that'll kind of keep you around, um, and we'll uh, we'll see how we how we get. I, I would imagine that we'll be done um, just a little bit after five o'clock. I will just kind of go through it all, um, and, and then I think uh, I think be done on the other side of it. So. If you would like to take a look um, at that, go ahead and read that. And I'll just kind of highlight. You know, keeping a building weather tight, um, cost effective, both from an energy, well, actually from an energy perspective. Providing uh, insulation. Um, you know, also, a, a, I mean, I would put the word out there, sort of a, a mood of the building, um, a temperature, both emotionally and um, actually speaking. So just kind of keep rolling through here. Let me give you three more things to think about here. I'll let you read that. I don't mean to distract you. Let's give you a second there. So obviously we have a, from a structural point of view, you know, a, a gravity system, right? A lateral system, you know, those demands need to be met. And then at the end of that, it's not just a, um, if you went back to when I was in school, it was not just an applicator stick model um, or sort of a, a, a wood, balsa wood model, um, but you know, the building needs to have some sort of a cover. Um, structural engineers. Structural engineers would um, you know, obviously accentuate the, the, the structure of the building. Um, these also deal with, uh, you know, from an architectural point of view, right, the purpose, the space that's involved inside the building but there is truly a need for cover um, for that building to have an envelope to have something that protects the contents and the people and the issue really is trying to let me wait just a moment the uh, the art the issue is to try and integrate that with um, the structure um, and, and what's going on um, in the uh, in in the building function. 
So you can go ahead and read. You've already read that, I think. And so I'm just going to move to the next one. You know, there are some necessities with the building cladding. Um, and I think the very interesting part here is that with, I mean, not only sort of technology, but just you should say proper usage. And now you can get into the idea of something that is creative, um, but something where cladding materials were, were very defined, very short. Um, and now they have quite a wide range of possibilities. Um, and, and no matter what material you use though, there are, the, there are several issues that, that remain. Um, you know, the building, just in general, the building must support, and that's a vague word, but support the cladding. So we would say both from a, a weight perspective, both from a dead load perspective, and then also from a, as we would now, I hope be more aware of just the lateral implications of weight. Um, and, just also some, you know, compatibility issues, stiffness compatibility um, specifically, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, but um, you are, you know, very much, um, very strong possibilities um, in terms of what you can use. It mostly comes down to how you can use it. Um, and I'll, Give full exposure. I think I could look at cladding on buildings. I think I think all day. Um, I think that's extremely um, entertaining uh, when done properly. Or when done creatively, properly. Here's lighting on the side of a building as well on the cladding. Um, it uh, captivates the mind a little bit. Um, would be the way I would uh, I would describe it. So, structural design, um, as we've talked about, the the cladding needs to be supported. Um, so, the cladding, if it needs to be supported, then there is a cladding framing, and that framing is a structural system, both from the weight of the material and from the deformations and so we'll talk about that more um, subject to loads you know this idea of a cladding you know it needs to span um, you know we've we've talked about span to depth ratios quite a bit uh, in this class but you know the cladding is going to need to span between supports um, so it it's going to have to um, also be compatible with you know this whole thing like oh it's uh 12 feet on center um so that's a that's an issue with what type of cladding is going to be used and then ultimately the loads need to be traced to the to the primary structure we'll talk about a secondary structure something that may end up supporting the uh the cladding in a building um but the uh, ultimately, the primary structure will hold that that cladding in place and sort of will be responsible for it. Um, the, the other thing is, um, you know, I'm sorry, a little off here, thermal expansion and contraction needs to be dealt with. Um, just like any material temperature has an effect on it, you know, and, and then this is a big one is that it needs to be detailed such that, sorry, it does not become structural. 
So it does not become structural would be the, um, would be the idea for, let's see if I can get the hang in here, um, uh, for a, a, a cladding system. It does not want to um, be asked to do something that is not designed to do. Um, so we'll, we'll keep that in mind as we, as we kind of roll through here. Structural design, right? Loads on cladding. Um, obviously, there's going to be self-weight involved. Um, different materials will have different self-weight, and we'll talk through that. And those, um, that cladding, you know, ultimately is, uh, you, you would think um, just from what we've done, you know, what captures wind load, you know, obviously shear walls, you know, capture it. But the fact that, you know, we've dealt with buildings that have some sort of a shape to them, and a big gust of wind that shows up. So, you know, we're dealing with these faces as if they're, you know, they're able to capture um, all the load that's, uh, or all the wind load that's, um, that's um, applied to them. So, in terms of loads on cladding, um, lateral loads are applied. And so that gets back to, the span involved. So from a deflection uh, point of view, you know, not only are there, not only are, is the primary structure involved um, with uh, deflection limits, you know, and, and you would say that this is extremely stiff. I mean, these are very small deflections. Um, the cladding framing also has to have I mean, those are very small deflections. The hang is just not gonna get admitted here. Um, keep trying. My pen is about to do its thing. Um, and so, you know, L over 120, L over, those are extremely small. I mean, we've been, from a structural point of view, you're dealing with, you know, L over 18. Um, you know, L over 24, L over 12, you know, so to be able to hold something and, and the, the, really the, 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 the take home is that the cladding elements themselves are extremely stiff, um, in nature. So the things that support them have to be extremely stiff, um, and, uh, not allow for too much deflection. So a quick comparison here with uh, floor framing and cladding framing and, uh, and the different elements involved. So I'm just gonna kind of leave this here from a, kind of see the, hopefully we're very familiar with that from a cladding perspective. Um, this, you know, to me, I, I think I could look at glass cladding I think all day actually, um, and night. I think I could, I could, I could, I could span more than uh, more than a few hours with that. Um, you know, holding it in place, the mullions and the studs, the secondary structure, the primary structure, and then you know, interestingly, that 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 cladding could be multi-story. Um, so, let's see if the hang can get in here. So we'll see exactly how much of um, how much of these details we get into. You'll be exposed quite a bit, so I'll keep putting this word in front of you. I mean, it, it is so much about detailing, detailing. The other concept I like is rubber meets the road. I like that phrase. Um, I think you guys perhaps didn't take ME212, but dynamics, that's a big friction type of uh, concept. But anyways. So cladding framing types, you know, what 
what's going to hold that cladding in, um, in, in place. So you've got assemblies um, that will hold, you know, for the most part, it's a uh, precast concrete type of trajectory. Um, light gauge steel studs we'll talk about a little bit. Um, and, and for the most part, you know, that's an out of plane type of support that those light gauge steel studs are holding something quite, uh, uh, quite heavy. Mullions, a little bit more for glass. And then secondary structural steel, concrete, um, other elements. And this just gets into the fact that sometimes that uh, cladding can be a little bit, uh, can be a little heavy. Uh, so we've got some pictures that we'll, we'll deal with or, or, or talk through here. So, you know, the, the idea of, I mean, it's, it's this, this um, precast panels. Um, when it, we'll talk about just in a little bit here, this idea of, of cladding and mobility. Um, but the fact that, you know, components are uh, constructed off-site and then brought to the site. Um, so a little bit has to do with just the size of it. Um, and that obviously relates to the weight. Um, the other thing, and we'll talk about this just a little bit at the end, but you know, the way it's being held, um, can't really see it here a whole lot, but things being held there and there, it looks like it's sort of floating in the air, but you know, the, um, the, uh, the idea of the contact, uh, the contact points, the support, uh, and obviously getting it from, from point A to point B, but, um, you know, literally it's, it's then connected, you know, you would see back here, right? You would see the structure of the building. Um, and then that's where the cladding has to be properly connected. So, you know, just like, just like any other component, it has, weight um but also it has you know and, and we'll see how much we can we can get there but the idea of the deformation um the deformation that occurs in the structure and then the deformation that occurs in the element i mean you can kind of think man that looks like a pretty stiff a pretty stiff element and we're talking about all these frames back here and these columns and those are you know in relation to that panel, those are pretty flexible. So there has to be when, where they connect, there has to, that has to be accounted for. Um, and so we'll, we'll deal with some detailing um, that, uh, that, that accounts for that. Um, from a light gauge steel structure, um, this idea of light gauge steel strut, sorry, studs, um, and holding what could be uh, here is a masonry wall, something that's out of plane, um, that, that cover to the building, the skin of the building. Um, so, you know, from a structural point of view, those studs span in this direction. So that's really a, a, a span direction we haven't dealt with yet, um, but that's, you know, that's what's really being supported. Um, and those, steel studs are then connected to the structural steel. Um, so that's where the, the cladding, um, and, and then somehow that cladding needs to be supported and then connected to the primary structure um, that, uh, that has already been designed. Um, so, you know, you think of, you know, why do we use 150 pounds per square foot? You know, that's, that's what this is, you know, all taking into account. Um, things like the exterior and certain, certain cladding is going to be more, um, are definitely going to be more, uh, have more weight than other types, but you know, the, the out of plane support becomes, uh, extremely important here. Um, uh, I think this might, this is, you know, the idea of, of, uh, of mullions that would be supporting, you know, other um, 
you know, mostly, mostly glass. I mean, you see this in not quite this striking, but you see that in Kennedy Library um, where you have sort of full height um, glass. Um, this is where I think I could just kind of look at this all day. Uh, I really think I probably could, but um, the, the, you, you see something like this, you know, obviously the idea of a skin, um, you know, although extremely stunning on this bright sunny day, you know, the issues of, um, of water, um, coming into a building, you know, obviously glass is extremely brittle. So again, there has to be this idea of, of and, and we will get into this, this jointing concept um, and where these components, these pieces come together through joints. Um, so, so that's the, um, you know, Again, where the, I mean, even in this picture, you know, where the rubber meets the road um, is quite, you know, quite, quite interesting. Um, but, you know, I, again, I, perhaps I'm the only one, I, I could look at this all day, but, um, but we won't. Um, so, you know, obviously the other, um, Another component would be sort of structure, uh, secondary structural steel, uh, secondary structural steel, uh, steel, sorry. So you got here, we've got, you know, sort of primary trusses. Um, and then as this span occurs with, with the roof structure, you know, you get these other secondary um, structural elements um, that hold that cladding in place. Um, you know, again, another, Kind of stunning from the outside, you know, to then what it looks like on the uh, on the inside. Um, just the the primary versus secondary um, issues with uh, with uh, with cladding and um, both on the side of a building or even on the uh, on the top of a building. Um, and this is very neat to see the idea of structural glass. I mean, you see, we've got glass beams um, connected here um, at the uh, at the at the wall, and then the the glass ceiling. Um, perhaps if I found this building, I would just lay on the ground and look up at it um, all day long. But just sort of. Uh, Hold off on that. So, you know, so much of this, you know, that needs to be accommodated, you know, is the, the building movement. Um, and, and there needs to just be a, and we talk about movement, you know, flexibility, and just also the stiffness needs to be compatible. You know, if, if not, you know, then, If it's not, then you're going to have issues with the um, with the cladding participating where it's not supposed to be participating, and that could be perhaps in the gravity and also in the lateral um, system that's in a building. You know, we want to preserve. We want to keep that lateral system pure. You know, we want to keep the engineering side of it. Uh, extremely pure and and um, insulated from the cladding that we're putting on the building. So generally, the the deformation is one floor relative to another. Also uh, described as the drift, um, one floor to another. You could have multi-floor cladding, where, where where clearly you would need now not just one floor. Um, but, you know, but if we break down, you know, what causes building movement, you know, not only the dead load, but generally the dead load has already been accounted for once the building becomes occupied. You know, that's why, you know, in some of those 
Some beams would have camber to them, such that when they're put in place um, and then holding all the dead load, you know, then their deflection is uh, not as accentuated. But when that live load shows up, you know, at, in different times and different uh, amounts, um, column obviously the, the the column issue with that, um, and then also the lateral movement, the seismic and the wind that's involved. So that's a little that's a little aggressive, but you know when you talk about the the amount of uh, of floor defl uh, deflection, you know if you're talking about something that has a 15 foot height. You know, then you would be talking about 180 inches. So from a, you know, two point of view, it would be one over 180 from a, if it was a, a one inch deflection. So, you know, the, the deflection, the lateral movement, you know, uh, and there's a big unknown here in terms of the uh, lateral uh, demand that's put on a structure. So. So from accommodation, um, you know, from a, a code requirement, um, we'll, we'll have a little bit of this that we do, um, dealing with codes, sort of design forces. Um, but, you know, that movement, you know, from a design basis earthquake, um, the ones that you're designing for, um, so from a structural point of view, you know, the ones where we're dealing with the triangular load, which, you know, then would create deflections within a building. This is sort of overly accentuated, but um, that's kind of the way that the uh, deflection occurs um, story to story. Um, and so then the connections that we use for the cladding, all right, there may be something that's sliding, slotted, um, bending. Um, and so the the issue is that the the deflections that occur, you know, this is this is highly accentuated, but um, you know, we can't have the connections that are holding the cladding. We can't have those fail, um, so that that needs to withstand the uh, the earthquake or the wind that we would expect from a deflection. Generally, the deflections that we that'll be um, um, designed for would be more so um you know more so in an earthquake but not if the if the wind is the governing um not if the wind is the governing lateral load um you know from a performance expectation you know nobody i wouldn't think i mean unless you were uh, some sort of a enjoyed the uh enjoyed pools and swimming but you know generally you're looking to not do that inside of a building but you know, water tightness and, and this, you know, it, it comes back to the joints and the, um, you know, the detailing that is uh, necessary um, to, to do this, to create something that's watertight. So we'll talk about that here in, a, in just a minute with some of the forces that created actually. Actually, we'll do it on the next slide even. Oh, no, nope, sorry. The next one after that. So um, accommodation of building movement in the joints. So not only the, the building moves, um, but then, you know, the jointing. So this goes back to this concept um, that we will deal with quite a bit, the idea of jointing. Um, and so the, uh, you know, the movements, both horizontal and um, vertical. So Anyways, that, that concept will, uh, will show up for us. All right. So fundamentally speaking, although technology has increased, um, you know, this has not changed actually, like what would get water through an opening? Um, so I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. And so we've got gravity. Right, we've got
kinetic energy, which one half mv squared. So not only the mass of the particle, but the velocity of the particle um, will, will transfer, right, through a joint. A little bigger here. All right, surface tension as those water droplets um, work their way through. Um, capillary action, or even if you make that very small, then that actually creates um, creates movement along that small orifice. Um, air currents, something getting pushed. And then also a pressure differential can cause movement into the uh, into the structure. So uh, no matter what the the increase in technology is or um, you know material development, um, these six are sort of the foundational pieces to what needs to be dealt with. Um, we can't kind of get around those um, those six. So, all right, kind of coming coming down the stretch here, and uh, from a precast concrete, just talking about that first one. Um, you know, why why is that such a popular? Well, one is you know, why is that that used often? You know, again, we're you know we're talking about large scale structures here. You know, not used in residential type of uh, construction, but you know, it's good strength to weight ratio. Although concrete is, you know, quite heavy, but uh, from a strength point of view, you know, not only the cladding can span, you know, it can span between the supports, you know, it's mobility in terms of brought to the structure. Um, extremely good with, with fire performance. It's obviously non-combustible um, in terms of a material. And it could be used, you know, you know it can be used for both load bearing and non-load bearing. So it has some uh, functional, um, something that would be, would be functionally attractive. Um, from why you might choose to use it. Here would be some concrete panels that are being um, transported. Um, and so it's, you know, it's kind of one of those like, oh, well, we've done the gravity, dealt with that, dealt with the lateral, say dealt with, but you know, these are parts of it. And now these things are gonna show up and, you know, quote, need to be dealt with on the uh, on the construction site, um, you know they have to be, you know, constructed off site and transported. But you know, also from a, a money point of view, that's it's quite good um, that they can be constructed and they are quite mobile and modular. And this is kind of. You know, getting towards the end here, the idea of the details, details, details. Um, you know, not only are these um, panels, not only do they need to be uh, picked up, um, that needs to be accounted for, but, you know, because of their weight, um, obviously a person can't pick them up, but by crane, you know, how they're actually going to be then um, How they're going to be constructed um, and put in place is an issue. And so I just kind of, you know, as we as we start to move in this direction, the details, 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 you know, this is, you know, this is where the rubber meets the road, rub meets road. Maybe we can call it RMR. Club RMR here where the rubber meets the road. And you know, how these things are then connected to the structure, to the superstructure or to the secondary structure. 
um, and this is where you start getting into the pictures of the uh, um, the details. So the details matter, you know, quite a bit here, you know, in terms of the uh, the cladding um, that is going to be put on the on the structure. So uh, this course in general just is meant to be an introduction to this for you. So you may have had uh, you may have had exposure to it um, or not, but you know, we will, we will work with, you know, how, what are the issues, you know, surrounding these details? Um, and then also what, um, you know, how we need to be cognizant of these, um, uh, of the connection points. So I'm going to do this real quick here. Go to homework three. Name, that's good. All right, so homework three, which is due next Thursday. So you've got one week. This is a, I want to say quasi um, midterm, but in lieu of that, you'll be asked to. Circle back. Um, this this also gets us into project three, which I'll talk about here in just a second. So, here would be a um, got three questions on this, and you've got some sizing to do um, from a structural point of view. You got some load flow to deal with. You know, you got some statics here that brings it down to that girder. So you're going to have to do some statics and free body diagram, sort of a sum of the moments equation. So, you know, this is due in one week. Um, next Tuesday, I'll give a little bit of hints or partial solutions. And so then you're asked, I got you a um, beam and then also a um, plate girder sizing. Um, and with the capacity and so you're doing a demand versus capacity type of calculation uh, here would be a little bit more from the lateral perspective um, so i'm asking you to do this here we've got multiple walls they're all the same um, that you'll uh, you'll be uh, working with and in, in the design and then also a little bit of framing um, to deal with with some uh, a couple of choices, um, creating some bays, and then also doing a slab uh, concrete for a D. So this is kind of in lieu of your midterm. And let me take us back here. Here we are. All right, so to wrap ourselves up here, close that. So we've got right here, you've got a homework to this. This is one week to work on that. I will have that rubric shortly. Um, so Project three, right? I said we're going to have a project three and a project four. And so what I'm going to ask you to do, um, and, and I think what I'll end up doing is I'm going to end up sending out a survey on Monday. I think we're back. So I'm going to assign this project on Tuesday, but what I'm looking for is coming to class. Um, and, and so I think I'm going to do that with a survey um, instead on Monday. But I'm looking for a modern building in the United States, um, something between 80 feet and 100 feet in height. It doesn't have to be anything famous. It could, it could be infamous, um, something. <laughs> Uh, that's not the right word. It could be, um, it does not have to be sort of a, 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 a um, substantial work of, of architecture 
Um, but I'm just looking for something that is, has a height about like that. And that's going to be um, what I want, what I want to do um, through this survey is then I'm going to assign, hopefully I can assign something that you have chosen, um, something that you like, something that you enjoy. Um, if not, then I'm going to have to assign something a little different. So that's where I'm looking if you bring two things to the party, um, to that Monday survey, then I should be able to turn around and hopefully give you one of those two um, to your choice. Um, and, and I do realize you might say, well, if I knew exactly what you're going to ask me to do with that building, that would affect how much I like it or not. So I'm aware of that. Um, but what I think we're going to do is we're going to end up with a building a non, it's going to be a non rectangle. So sort of a real life building. So perhaps something that has change in height to it. So you dealing with a building like that. Um, and this will deal with both wind, seismic, and also gravity. So essentially what you're gonna end up doing is turning around on this project and doing all of it, both the, the gravity, the lateral, um, but the only caveat is that you can't sort of use, and this is where I know it's time to end, my pen is starting to go, you cannot use the existing gravity or seismic. So that's kind of what build, what, uh, what project three is going to be is you're going to have a, a building, um, you know, plan and, and profile. Um, but then you're then going to have, you're going to have some constraints. You're going to need a long span. Uh, if, you're gonna have to create it if it's if it's kind of not in there if it's not a long span structure, um, and then also you're gonna have to create a lateral system, you know, one that's different. So um, this won't be something that you've done before. It won't be like you know project one or two. You know, it's gonna be something that you're gonna kind of quote look and find um, something that is a, a modern structure. Um, the only real constraints is just the height. Um, and uh, I think by the end, my, my plan is that I will, I will approach you guys on Monday. Uh, and then the idea is that by the end of the class on Tuesday um, is that you have your structure or your building. So that's the, the hope for what we would have the end of the day on Tuesday. This will not deal with cladding. Um, what we'll be doing is simultaneously, we'll be working through cladding issues. Um, and then cladding will be introduced in project four. So, and also homework four, but. I think that's kind of the way that we will approach the um, remainder of the quarter here. Um, so anyways, keep an eye out. Keep an eye out on, on Monday um, for a little bit of a, of a survey sent to you. I'll probably send a link to something for you to fill out. And all I'm trying to do is, is avoid the fact that everybody shows up with the same two, two things. Um, but, you know, really shouldn't, but we want to make sure that we're hitting the ground running and these are going to be solo projects um, in terms of what we'll end up with. So, in light of my five o'clock um, extreme backlighting that I have here, um, 
Gosh, you think you're looking into the sun. Uh, if you have any questions, you can chat them, you can ask them, you can give me a, a thumbs up, perhaps a clap. Um, I, will, uh, I will have, can I get a thumbs up or a clap out there? In the midst of, there we go, somebody's there. Um, I appreciate it and um, I look forward uh, to kind of moving. So you've got homework three um, that you can chip away at. And, um, and then, like I said, also you want to think about, come up with some options here. I guess I would say that the more obscure, the better, um, that then you won't have the chance of being doubled up on. Um, but everybody's going to have their own, their own project three. Um, so something that, again, you want to think of, up with something that's between 80 and 150 feet so you get a sense with the uh with the wind um and then also the seismic um that could be involved so i will i'm going to take a, a 10 minute break and i'll so I'll be back at 5 15. if you um if you want to hang around and ask any questions um i should end up with uh your project two graded quite aggressively um, and, uh, and sent back to you here very, very quickly. But um, if not, if I come back in 10 minutes and nobody's here, that's completely fine. Um, and so I, uh, I, I do wish you a good weekend and um, we, will, we will move aggressively towards the end of the quarter. So um, take care, I'll be back in about 10 minutes.